Welcome to the driveway. Today I'm going to be talking about a bola. A bola is a uh, hunting weapon. You see that it's it's three weights. Ah, I might be out of range here. Three weights, and they're all uh, attached in the center. And there's lots of different designs for these. Sometimes they have two weights. Sometimes three. Sometimes seven or eight. It just depends on what they're what they're hunting. Uh, the Inuits up in the Arctic would hunt birds and they would have little uh, walrus teeth with holes drilled in them with strings and there'd be seven or so of them and they would swing them around like this and throw them up in the air and it would tangle the birds up. Down in South America there are still cowboys uh, that use these to catch calves and cows. You know they throw them at the legs of the animals and it binds them up. And they're designed that they start spinning in the air, they separate out, and then they go around something's legs and just wrap and wrap and wrap around. So this one I had some industrial uh, ball bearings, and uh, I just had my wife sew me up little leather bags, and we actually used uh, some metal there to make a little sleeve for the cordage. I, I wove the cordage out of uh, hemp twine. Uh, it's a six ply uh, reverse twist and you can see how on this one I wove the loop in but then I wove this way got to the middle and then wove out two different directions kept weaving fibers in and on the end the, only, the, the aggravating thing about these is that they get tangled up so there's always some untangling but these are just knotted on See how it's just knotted on. So I guess uh, each arm is about, I don't know, not three feet, maybe maybe 28 inches or 30 inches or something like that. Now some of these, there would be one string that would be shorter with a lighter weight, and that's supposed to help it spread out more, but this is the first one I've ever made, so about 20 yards behind me I've got a shovel rammed into the earth with a stick crossing it and we're going to throw this. I'm going to reposition the camera. We're going to throw this and see how it does. This will be my first time ever throwing one so don't laugh at me. But the build went pretty well. It took me probably an hour to to get it all figured out and hooked together. So we'll see. Now it's going to be a learning curve. But what I'm going to try to do is gather up one of these about like this. Hold the rest here in the apex where it all comes together. I'm going to swing these over my head once. I don't want them to get real tangled together. See how they're already... probably hold my fingers here in the middle. And if I just keep twirling around, I'm afraid it's going to, they're going to twist. So I'm going to give it one sharp throw around and I'm going to sling it. Alright, let's try it. Can you see my target over there? Actually, I'm going to move the camera so that we'll have a better angle. Oh, I didn't move the camera, but I went ahead and threw it once to practice. Let's go look and see what happened. So that's how this is designed. Set you back up. So if an animal uh, was walking or running, you would throw a little bit in front of it, and this thing would hit it, and see how it's twisted around? It's all twisted around. First time I've ever thrown one of these. That's how easy they are. So from about 20 yards away, we actually got this, and it would have tripped. It would have had trouble... Uh, continuing to run. There were actually natives down in South America that would train their horses to run with these around their back legs so that when the enemies would come and, and throw at the horses, the horses could at least get their riders out of the danger zone. So that's kind of an interesting little factoid. Uh, used extensively even uh, before the time of uh, Jesus. But an old, old weapon. Of course most of them didn't last uh, from way back then, but they find stones 
that are uh, there's little indentions carved all the way around where they would tie the strings so we know that it's got a storied history among the uh, North American uh, up, up the Inuit populations up north and also the South American uh, many tribes used in South America there have been examples found in China most of those are they have metal chains holding two weights together and they are beautiful they're ivory and precious metals I'm not sure if those were for warfare or for hunting but you're, in the in the Americas these have been used for in South America at least both warfare and hunting so just an interesting little object I've always wanted one been an admirer I finally sat down and made one not too tough not too tough to make okay I'll show you how I'm throwing it this is a different view who the bugs are at today pretty day but the bugs are gonna take over I'm carrying around my neck like this just so it doesn't get tangled as much I'm gonna find the nexus where all these things come together I'm gonna to get one of these I'm just gonna kind of pull it up like this I'm gonna stick my fingers sort of between these two because I don't want them to get tangled and then it's just a quick over my head and there it went Find the midway here, get this one up a little bit, grab it in the middle, so we got this one kind of trailing. Ooh. So if you, you can see it's all it's tied together, look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? Now that's kind of what you want it to do right there. Let's see if I can. Focus you in a little bit. If you could see this but man this thing just wrapped around and around and around let me see if I can get it loose see that's wrapped around I'm telling you the one thing I don't like about this tool is the reset takes so long Well, anyway, that's what I got for you today. Yeah. The bola. Called by a lot of different names, but I think bola is from the Spanish. And it's their name for this South American weapon they found when they got here. They were already, people were already using it when the Europeans arrived. And very effective for hunting or uh, hurting people, probably.